Welcome friends and collectors and thank you for joining me for another brand new edition of Diecast Emporium. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Classic Construction Models 148 scale Dresser TD40B Crawler Dozer or Bulldozer as most of us know them today. A little bit of information on Dresser if you've never heard that name before. So Dresser is the company that uh, basically bought out the rights or the assets of International Harvester, their construction line anyway, when it comes to their bulldozers. Uh, in the 90s, they already had been refining these TD40 dozers for well over 40 decades by that time. And long story short, eventually, very soon thereafter, they would sell the line off um, to Komatsu and other companies as well. So a lot of information there, but basically all you need to know is that this was a bare bones machine that uh, was very popular among a lot of contractors because it was very simple to operate. It had a lot of power and it's really a shame, honestly, in my opinion, that Dresser is really uh, not still around today. As for the scale model, this is very significant for a few different reasons, but namely, this is the very first jump off into the deep end, if you will, uh, for classic construction models when it comes to die cast models. This is their, in other words, this is their very first die cast model they've ever done. Um, they did this in, I believe it was 1993. And up to that point, they had specialized in uber, I hate to use that word, uber high-end um, brass pieces. And it was uncharted waters for them. They weren't quite sure they could bring that same standard and same quality to the die-cast world. Long story short, as we all know today in hindsight, it was a good move. These were very popular. They sold out almost overnight. Uh, they were so popular, in fact, that they ended up doing the TD40C series. Those sold out really well. And then very soon thereafter, of course, we started getting some cat models and die cast. So long story short, if you enjoy collecting models and you like the history behind them, this is a very, very significant piece to own because this is exactly the model that convinced CCM to not only stick with their high quality and high standard for their uh, very high-end brass models, but also there is a big market for die cast construction pieces. Okay, so as you see in front of you, it comes in a blue sleeve style box with two pieces of white styrofoam. Also, it is important to note here and keep this in mind, I have not had this new since 1993. I would have been three years old at that time. I did purchase this used on the secondary market. So I don't know, I don't have a lot of information to go off of in, in terms of how accurate the packaging is completely. I do know that there were several different versions of this made. Obviously this version on the side depicts that it has an enclosed cab. That's not true. The model that you will see here in a minute has an open rop setup. They also made it obviously with rippers, but with winches as well. And then 10 years after CCM made this dresser TD40B, they made another run, which is unheard of for CCM models. Again, just recapping very quickly for the new people. Once CCM makes a model and they sell out, they're done. They never re-release that model in that specific color scheme or that specific configuration ever again. But they made an exemption with this one. Um, in 2005, obviously, we know Hurricane Katrina occurred. And one way that CCM thought that they could contribute to the relief efforts was they remade the Dresser TD40B with a C-Series cab and a couple other differences. And again, those proved to be very successful. They made those in very limited numbers. I think the number was maybe 50 or less, maybe 60 on the high end, somewhere in there. Um, at any rate, it was less than 100. And again, those are very, very highly sought after collector's pieces. I don't even have one of those in my collection. Um, but again... A nice model for those of those of you out there that want to chase one of those down. All right, continuing on with the unboxing, you've heard me go on and on and on, but it is important to give information out because you're not going to get that information on any other YouTube channel. All right, let's get this thing out of the styrofoam. Now, this is obviously going to be unboxed upside down, as you can see. 
There are no editing on my videos, obviously, either, so that you guys can see everything as it happens in real time. There is no funny business over here on this channel. You're going to get it as you see it. So there you go. There is the model. There is nothing else included inside the styrofoam here. Obviously, you can tell and see very clearly. It is the open wrapped version. We are going to pause momentarily. I'm going to get the packaging off the table. And when we come back, we will start the review more in depth. All right. When I paused this video, I realized I had been rambling for five and a half minutes, so again, I apologize. But again, all of that information is relevant and important to the story of the CCM Dresser TD40. So let's go ahead and quickly get the details and decals knocked out. As you can see, bear in mind, this is an early 1990s model. Paint finish, decal application, excellent for the time period. Uh, even if you hold this thing up to some of the models made within the past couple decades, absolutely awesome. Very, very little... Uh, nitpicking any way that I have to say about it. Here is the dresser nameplate and decal again on the front of the engine housing. You have two forward-facing lights. Here are your wear plating and uh, perforations on, front, on the front of the blade. Check this out. Again, bear in mind the age of this model. You can see the different lines going to the blade cylinders and cylinder rams. Air cleaner, exhaust, small grab, brand, small grab handle rather up on top. Here you can see inside the operator's station, it is rather crude, not a whole lot, uh, not very pleasant at least to look at. Everything is plastic up there, including the operator's seat, a couple, a couple of joysticks on the right-hand side, a few more on the left-hand side, and then the operator station up in here is even less desirable to look at. Anyway, the track frames and tracks themselves, they are linked, and... When you move them by hand, both tracks will move independently or move together as one, so you can tell that they are linked together. On the back, here is dresser once again, and that beautiful blue striping. I always liked this trade dress. It's, in my opinion, it's one of the best looking OEMs. I didn't get to see a whole lot of these growing up, but I do remember seeing a couple of them, whether it be on bulldozers or scrapers or whatnot, even on a few large wheel loaders I remember seeing but it always was impressive and professional looking to me. Moving towards the rear with the three shank ripper assembly, again, very impressive for the time. You have flexible rubber hydraulic lines going to the cylinders on the three shanked ripper. It is a rather heavy assembly. You can see that with very little plastic being used. The only plastic being the cylinder jackets. Back on the right side of the machine, again, here's your tracks, your, um, your blade, your blade arms, everything else that you've seen before. I will flip the machine on its side so you can see underneath. Let's do it this way so we can make out the writing. Okay, we have the old school classic construction models logo on the top left, Dresser TD40B, scale 1 to 48 scale, and finally made in China. You can see how the model is mostly assembled by two Phillips screws. Moving straight on to functionality, I already mentioned the tracks. See how they move together, just like that helped by your main sprocket and the other idler that moves as well. Okay, how about the ripper functionality? This is as high as it will go. You can angle it if you want to, and mine will go down to approximately here without forcing anything, which does lift the back portion of the machine slightly off of the review table. Again, nothing to complain about there. Moving towards the front of the dozer, here is the blade at grade level. How about if we raise it up? Now, one thing that is a bit disappointing, again, taking into account that this machine is nearly 30 years old, we don't have any blade tilt, or maybe my paint tolerances have seized up over the past nearly three decades, but there is absolutely no blade tilt. So you can't achieve any blade tilt forward or backward, and likewise, there's no tilt left to right either. That being said, in conclusion, if you are a fan of vintage heavy equipment and or a fan of bulldozers, I cannot recommend chasing one of these down and adding one of these to your collection. I picked this up on eBay for a ridiculously good deal. Not bragging, I'm just, I tell you that to tell you this. You don't have to pay the ridiculously inflated prices that are on eBay from certain sellers that we all know. Wait for one of these to go on auction Watch the auction until the last five minutes or so. Put a bid in. You might be surprised if you actually win the damn auction and you win the model. 
happened for me several hundred times over the years, and that was the case with this. I picked this up for less than $70. Again, it's not perfect. I mentioned that the, the ROPS is less than stellar. As soon as I finish this video, I have to go glue that back down. Again, the packaging, not 100% perfect condition, but overall, I wanted an example of the Dresser TD-40B by Classic Construction Models. This was really the only way I was going to get an example of the Dresser TD-40, and I'm very, very pleased with it, and I couldn't recommend it enough to you guys. As always, speaking of you guys, thank you so much for watching Diecast Emporium. I really appreciate all of the comments, all of the likes, and interacting with each and every one of you. You guys keep me going and keep me motivated to keep putting out new content. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be well. I'll see you in the next review.